Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Game Changer. I'm Maryam Zia. In today's program, we will be exploring Pakistan's relations with United States. When we look at Pakistan's relationship with United States, they have been mostly of a roller coaster of relationship marked by many highs and lows. But despite many troubled events, we know that Pakistan has occupied an important place in a geopolitical strategy of United States. In today's program, we will be exploring Pakistan's relationship with United States and how uh, after uh, 75 years of bilateral engagement between the two countries, there is a need to rethink and revisit these relationship. And to discuss this and more, I'm joined in the studios by Mr. Humayu Khan, who is international affairs expert. And uh, with him, I'm joined by uh, Dr. Salma Malik, who is international affairs expert. And we are joined online by Dr. Hassan Javed, who is an economist and international affairs expert. A very warm welcome to you all in the program. So let me start with you, Dr. Salma. When we talk about Pakistan's relationship uh, with United States, as uh, we know that there have been ups and downs, I want to uh, start with the diplomatic relationship and uh, the uh, recent statement made by President Joe Biden in uh, October 2022, where he said that Pakistan is one of the most dangerous nations in the world, uh, which uh, Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif, as well as uh, Foreign Minister uh, Bilawal Bhutto condemned. Uh, but when we look at uh, past events as well. How do you see uh, Pakistan's relationship <coughs> with United States have evolved over time? Gee, thank you so much, dear. Um, the issue is that uh, Pakistan and the US relations are multi-sectoral. And uh, in all the sectors that they have their relationship, um, all of those sectors are very saturated, whether it be diplomatic, it be commercial, it may be military, and so many other things. And unfortunately, most of the time, what becomes more obvious is how Pakistan's relations with the US have unfolded more on the strategic level hmm. or the military level, the operations in Afghanistan and several other things, which takes uh, away the lens of the diplomatic of good relations and all. Uh, when we look at uh, the earlier years, uh, once Pakistan gained independence, US was one of the first countries to um, extend it um, uh, welcome to Pakistan as well as uh, recognition to Pakistan. Mm. But uh, that was part of how the US foreign policy or the State Department's policy is all about. So that was nothing extraordinary. But having sa said that, there has been a long controversy where Pakistanis today, in the wisdom of hindsight, say we should have opted for the Soviet Union's invitation rather than the US invitation and that's a huge debate as to what happened but Pakistan's going to the US uh, block joining that block made a lot of wisdom at that time because Pakistan's uh, perennial problems even at the time of inception were the ones that were catered better by the US and it always takes two to tango uh, so there are several good things that evolved over these seven long decades. Of course, uh, of course. Rather than uh, just focusing on the bad things and uh, right. when we, we have benefited a lot. These good things, uh, Mr. Humayu, uh, we know that uh, uh, Pakistan <coughs> is one of the largest recipient of US aid and foreign direct investments. US is, of course, Pakistan is giving and Pakistan is one of the largest exporters. So uh, keeping all these uh, things in mind, how do you see the uh, political situations of both countries, uh, like early elections or the economic situations of the region, uh, impact the relationship between Pakistan and United States? Uh, thank you, Mariam. I think the relationship, as uh, Dr. Malik was uh, earlier mentioning, has evolved uh, over the period. We were one of the best allies of the US in the beginnings in uh, 1950s. We were part of CETO, we were part of CENTO, we were part of the Western mm, Alliance. Non-NATO ally. A and the most uh, major non-NATO ally as well. We were also one of the most uh, important player for the US in the war against terror yes. as well. Mm -hmm. uh, we, as you were also mentioning, we are the recipient of the uh, highest amount of aid US has given to any country in the South Asia. Uh, nonetheless, it has, like, it has its ups and downs. As of now, the current situation is, uh, it's, it's different. U.S. particularly has uh, new uh, interest in South Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is very funny. That's exactly what I was trying to say earlier, that first we were part of the Western Alliance, then we were against the U.S., then we were with U.S. Mm -hmm. U.S. has always seen us in, mm -hmm. uh, with the lens of another country. First, when they wanted our support against the communism, they were uh, uh, helping Pakistan. Then when they wanted Pakistan in Afghanistan, they helped us. 
Hmm. Then now the uh, situation has a bit changed in a, uh, in a way. There's a new U.S. policy which is called Asia Pivot. President Obama enunciated that. Hmm. And now U.S. is seeing us from the lens of Chinese camp as well. And Pakistan has very clearly mentioned to not only the U.S. but uh, our European partners that we hmm. don't want to be part of any bloc politics. No doubt U.S. is a super global hyperpower. We want to have excellent uh, economic, diplomatic, hmm. political, business to business relationship. But we should not be seen as uh, somebody who is part of one camp or another. Pakistan is an independent country and w this is something we, we have learned from India as well. That right. They have learned the best of the both world. Yes. They were part of the Russian camp, they were part of the US camp and now they are again part of the US indeed, camp. And still indeed, and that yeah. is the reason in today's program we will be uh, talking about how to rethink these uh, uh, relations with the United States. Uh, Dr. Sen, when we talk about Pakistan's relationship with the uh, United States, of course, like we discussed that there is a history behind and 75 years of bilateral uh, collaboration between the two countries but how do you see what are the significant milestones of these relations between uh, Pakistan and United States see first of all if I talk about the political relationship um, uh, Dr. Malik uh, said it very right it's always two to tango the first thing first is the United States has been one of the largest source of foreign direct investment in Pakistan and remain Pakistan the largest uh, export market and second is the, the 2022. Uh, I mean, in October, President Biden called Pakistan one of the most dangerous nation in the world during the address in California while speaking about the changing global political situation. Since Pakistan government decided to import oil uh, from Russia in 2023, Russia. and the United, uh, yeah, yeah, United States had the demonstrated positive relationship with the Pakistan by allowing them to purchase oil from Russia at discounted price despite not signing a Washington-backed price cap on a Russian petroleum product. So the trade and investment relationship between the United States and Pakistan continue to grow and the U.S. government support this relationship by organizing business-to-business -business trade uh, delegations, uh, provide the technical assistance and the promoting business opportunities for U.S. companies to develop U.S.-Pakistan commercial partnership. Well, the Pakistan and the U.S. have a complex relationship over a year uh, with the both cooperation intentions, such as uh, like uh, war in Afghanistan, U.S. drone strikes in Pakistan. The recent, in, in recent years, they have been effort to improving, uh, improve relations, including the high-level visit between the officials from both countries. Now, there have been efforts to improve a relationship between the Pakistan and U.S. in September 2021. So U.S. Secretary of State Anthony uh, Blinken uh, met the Pakistan Premier, and uh, after that, said an other official to discuss issues such as uh, counterterrorism, cooperation, regional stability, and human rights. But uh, always, uh, we must have, and all the nations and uh, whole world must know that Pakistan is one of the vital country ever uh, been ally of uh, America. We we are the part of the economic aid. We uh, we are we have the uh, I mean uh, close ally of the military aid. We have the exchange program, uh, programs in the military exchange programs, humanitarian aids, counter aids, and educational trades. So in that way, so the most significant part, if I talk about the, uh, the important eras, so uh, I divide into the five eras, which is the Cold uh, War era, uh, Soviet uh, Afghan war, post 9-11 war, uh, right. uh, war uh, era, and the aid and assistance tensions and current status so we will continue to talk about on um, the cold war and the most important thing is that bone of contention was the soviet war but we uh, they stepped back from that point that they should not be the part of the soviet war and we also examine this part that we should not be the part of the afghan war right but now right. And then, the, we yes. must have to understand we are the most important ally of america but we are out of the block politics Right, of course. And that is why we are discussing about rethinking uh, relations with uh, Pakistan, Pakistan's relations with the United States. But Dr. Selma, when we talk about these relations, of course, uh, in the recent past, uh, we have uh, uh, seen that there have been tensions amongst Pakistan and United States. How do you see and how do you see uh, these tensions or uh, the bittersweet relationship has evolved uh, and what needs to be done? 
You see, there are few things. Number one, uh, Pakistanis are a little emotive about uh, relationships with other countries. Mm. Uh, we take it too literally and we take it too much to the heart. We need to understand that any of the relationships, uh, with the exception of few where we have uh, too much of investment of the heart and ide ideology, such as Saudi Arabia, mm. Uh, mm. the custodians of Harman Sharif and uh, Pakistan's old uh, friendship with China, etc. Uh, most of the relationships, especially uh, from uh, this ASEAN symmetric power distribution, uh, the US being the greater power, hyperpower, whatever mm. we would like to call it, uh, to Pakistan as one of the several countries in this area, which are very important, pivotal states and all, mm. they'll always be transactional. Mm. And even at the time of inception, uh, the US first priority was to quote India. Uh, and then when India was not available, then they shifted towards Pakistan. Mm. Yet the friendship has yielded well for both the sides. And it has not yielded well for both the sides. So a lot of complaints that have surfaced in that time period. But this particular <coughs> moment right now that we are looking at, hmm. where the US has practically moved out of South Asia, hmm. they want the, the Indians to be the regional policemen. Of course. And they also want India to be the outer limb for the US in trust to counter China. Hmm. Um, and the world attention is focused to it, towards Ukraine and other hmm. aspects. This provides Pakistan with that immense moment and opportunity, uh, plus uh, the Saudi-Iranian uh, friendship deal that China has broken. Of course, of course. Uh, provides Pakistan with this opportunity to sit back and realize that in these global shiftings that are taking place, and some of them very unprecedented, how should Pakistan frame itself in the future foreign policy right, parameters? And, and, and talking about how should Pakistan frame itself, uh, I would like to quote uh, former US envoy for Afghanistan, Zalmay Khalil Zad, who recently uh, gave a statement that Pakistan faces a triple crisis, political, economic, and security. Despite great potential, it is underperforming and falling far behind its archival India. It is time for serious soul searching bold thinking and strategizing. How do you see this statement? Because Pakistan has ob obviously uh, resented uh, this statement. So what are your views on this? That uh, United States, we keep on seeing that intervention in uh, internal affairs of Pakistan. I think Ambassador Khalil Zad, the very renowned uh, diplomat, he has a very long history. He has uh, the peace process that he brokered between Afghanistan and uh, the United States of America and the rest of the Allies. Uh, he's given very good statements and in the past he's given some uh, statements which were not very taken very well in Pakistan. Nonetheless, this particular statement, I think it, it holds water. Mm. Pakistan needs a lot of introspection in terms of our relationship with our neighbors, in terms of our relationship with West. I think there's a lot of rethinking which needs to be done. Uh, as of now, we are struggling to strike a deal with IMF again, restore the, pr uh, the program which was like stalled a couple of months or maybe a year ago. Uh, there are structural changes which IMF uh, required from Pakistan and mm. a lot of people and economists think that this is something which we should have done a long time ago. We are not doing that. We always think in, uh, in a binary way, zero or one. There's, mm. There could always be a win-win situation. Taking uh, As earlier I was saying, uh, look at you, uh, Indian foreign policy. Mm. <coughs> you know, they were best ally of the US, they were best ally of the Soviet Union mm. at the same time. As of now, uh, Dr. Snan earlier was mentioning that we are trying to almost mm. uh, strike a deal with mm. Russia to get right. oil. Of course. India has been doing it for a very long time. Right. So this is something which we need to learn but, the good practices. But Mr. Humayu, a foreign office as well as information minister has, uh, uh, has you know, uh, condemned this statement and they have, see, uh, they have uh, stated that this is an intervention in internal affairs of Pakistan. So how do you see that? No, that was the previous statement that uh, Ambassador Khalil Zad said about Imran Khan Imran or something, Khan, which yes. was unnecessary in a of way course. that he is a retired diplomat and he shouldn't be talking about the domestic hmm. politics of a country. Hmm. But since he's a retired diplomat, he's free to say whatever he, he can. We, we're not supposed to take him very seriously, in my opinion, uh, when it comes to this particular statement. Right. So, right. so Dr. Salma, when we talk about these current uh, situations in the region specifically, uh, sp especially U.S. withdrawal from the Afghanistan, how do you see it, it has impacted Pakistan's relation with the United States? Um, you see, uh, especially with context to Afghanistan, it was a very, very controversial type of a relationship. Um, Pakistan, whenever it rendered its best advice, the U.S. tend to ignore it. When Pakistan said, 
distinguish between good and bad Taliban. They were not listening to them. Then later on, mm. you know, what to them were the good Taliban, quote unquote, they became part of the Doha process. Mm. So Pakistan was used at any time that the US wanted Pakistan to ease their situation in Afghanistan. Pakistan was also instrumental, extremely instrumental in the US safe exit, uh, also having a face saving Doha Accord el earlier on and several other things in which Pakistan was not rendered its due recognition. Yet Pakistan was always in the news for all the negative publicity that, that happened, for all the failures that the US encountered because of its poor policies, poor understanding and articulation of the situation in Afghanistan. Had Pakistan been actually taken up by the US during these 20 long years as a partner um, in peace in Afghanistan, the situation would have been far m better for all countries and mm. actors involved, whether it was Afghanistan, Pakistan or the US. But what we had seen in those 20 years was that the US entering with, uh, despite the fact that at the very onset Hillary Clinton uh, actually went before the Congress and gave this testimony that the, the, the problems in Afghanistan are because of the mistakes that the US made during uh, the 1980s or the uh, uh, early 1990s. Um, so the start was pretty decent and yet once the US entered they had this chip on their shoulder that oh we are the best and Pakistanis totally messed up the situation, they are not part of the picture. They wanted to appease the Indians because uh, they were also looking at another uh, global checkerboard where Indians were needed for policing the China factor and the region and all. So they, they had a very warped policy in these 20 years and that resulted in a lot of bad sentiment that has created and that is overflowing in this post um, uh, Afghan exit scenario as well. Hmm. And the fact that Pakistan alone even in the 1980s or the 90, early 1990s and now has had to deal with the outflow of Afghan nationals, hmm. uh, their exit from, hmm. a, from a place which they felt was very insecure. Still there are so many people people coming here. Some of them have been accorded the refugee status. Pakistan is not part of refugee convention. Some of them are still alien. They are residing here. They are asylum seekers. Mm. And uh, the enterprises which are looking after these uh, arena, they know what the challenges that they are facing. And for Pakistan, which is already facing economic crisis and so much of instability of its own, uh, that's a big, big, big issue. But this is um, given the other factor that a lot of insecurity has overspilled from Afghanistan into Pakistan is another factor that we have to cater to. The Tehrik Taliban to Pakistan, the ISPK's uh, peak, and the fact that uh, the Taliban uh, regime in Afghanistan is uh, doing what it seems better. But yes. So what that is creating benefit. problems yes. face on for Pakistan and not for the US. US is sitting comfortably in Washington and monitoring the situation hmm. and passing statements officially and unofficially. So mm. that Pakistan is the one situation. going to face the brunt br br exactly. of their actions, of course. Absolutely. And we will be talking more about it, but we have to take a short break here. We are talking about convergences and divergences of Pakistan's relations with United States. Uh, Dr. Hassan, when we talk about these bilateral relations, how do you see, uh, specifically I want to talk about the counter-terrorism efforts uh, that both, uh, both countries have collaborated on, uh, how these efforts have evolved over time? Uh, same. I mean, if I go back to the history, like 1955, after the premier uh, uh, Hussein Sawardi established a nuclear power to ease of the le electricity crisis with U.S. offering grant of the three like lakh and fifty thousand dollar to acquire the commercial nuclear power plant. Following this year, the uh, the PAEC signed an agreement which counterpart the United States Atomic Energy Commission, where the research on the nuclear power and uh, training was started in the initially by the United States. Uh, in 1960, uh, and it is also for the uh, Zalmay Khalil Zad, who is not uh, uh, focusing on uh, their own troubles. He is not focusing on their own crisis, and he must have to think that there is a 
there is a uh, positive change going on with the Iran and Saudi Arabia is on the same page and they are going to make some more positive thing and there is a, uh, a ongoing uh, a petro dollar things and the uh, oil uh, price cap is completely changed and OPEC and OPEC plus is there. So uh, Zalme Khadizad must have to uh, step back his comment uh, and he must not be uh, into it. But let me uh, tell you about 1960, the US opened doors to Pakistan, scientists, uh, scientists and engineer to conduct the research on uh, a leading institutes of the US and notably ANL, ORNL and LLNL in 1965. So. Uh, our Pakistani uh, scientist Abdus Salam went to U.S. and convinced the U.S. government to help the established National Institute of the Nuclear Research in Pakistan, which was called uh, P uh, PINS uh, Stach, uh, TAC. And the research rector, uh, uh, rector uh, P-A-R-R, -R, the uh, P uh, P I N S TAC, which is called Building Up the Design by the leading American architect, uh, Edward uh, uh, Dural Stone. So American nuclear engineering, uh, uh, Peter Kettrick uh, designed the reactor, where, where, which was the supplied by the contractor American machines. So in 1989, there is a uh, countries agreed to the second military years, uh, which is about in 19, uh, 1988 to 1993, which is about the four ec billion economic development and security. Where you are talking about the uh, Talibanization and all, yes, we are the main part of that. We have, uh, we have, we have them. We just not help them. We get our 80,000 plus military officers. We are, we are giving much of much aids. We have given them the satellite access. We have given them the complete access to, the, to cover the Afghanistan. But they are not accepting as they are not honoring in, in most, most of the time in Obama uh, re regime. They are not uh, confessing that uh, way in, uh, in chapter 26 of this chapter where he, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, pointing out Pakistan in a very bad way, which is, uh, which is not at all been acceptable because without Pakistan, he cannot operate in this region. He cannot have the better export. We are the one that we give the better export to the Americans. We are the main ally. And since from inception, we are the ally. But it is not about that we, we they can, uh, I mean, contract us, uh, the, the condense us onto the block politics. Right, and, and, we, and Dr. Sen, there has been many ups and downs in this relationship, and we will be talking more about it. Uh, but Mr. Humayun, when we talk about U.S. interests in the South Asian region, how do you see what are the main interests of United States in the <coughs> South Asian region, and how do these interests impact Pakistan's relations with United States? I think uh, as of now, the interests are uh, aligning more towards uh, India within uh, South Asia. And this is exactly what when you asked me earlier a question, I was saying that US has always seen us uh, from the prism of another country or another interest. Mm. First it was Soviet Union, then it was India, then it was uh, China, China, Pakistan Economic Corridor, then it was Afghanistan, sometime it was nuclear weapons, mm. sometime it was only counted terrorism operations. Mm. Pakistan is a huge country. It's like the fourth or fifth largest in terms mm. of its population. We have a GDP of more than 350 people. We are 227 mm. million people right now. So U.S. needs to see us from an independent lens. It does not have to be associated with either Afghanistan or Iran or uh, India for that matter. Yes, uh, in geopolitics, countries do have to align in one way or another. But uh, the, the magnitude of our economy, the population, the diaspora that we have, we have half a million people mm. living in the United States of America, which are now becoming mm. very actively in uh, U.S. local politics, uh, doing a lot of good things in their economy. So it, it mm. needs to be looked from an independent lens. Hmm. That's something which is missing. So let's let's talk about that. What is the current state of trade and investment between Pakistan and <coughs> the United States? Uh, I think we are the uh, U.S. is the largest export uh, destination for hmm. Pakistan. Seventy percent of our export uh, constitute uh, in terms of uh, mm. cotton yield and other things that we send there. Uh, we import a lot of things from the U.S. There are a lot of big companies, uh, U.S. Mm. companies investing in Pakistan, as you were also mentioning earlier. Uh, there's Procter and Gamble, there's Pepsi, there's Coca-Cola, there's Metadata, Oracle, IBM. Mm. There's a list of companies here, and they're doing a lot of KFC, McDonald's, and y you name it. Uh, 
Hmm. Uh, within that, they are like doing annually a very good business, by the way. There's a tune hmm. of around four to five billion dollar revenue that they're generating per year. Hmm. So in that sense, US is still one of the most, uh, uh, I would say, lucrative market hmm. for the companies that they're coming. And then as we are the fourth largest English speaking nation, we have a historically linkages with the US in terms of language speaking, education system. They run the world largest uh, education uh, Programs program in for Pakistan. Pakistan. Fulbright is one. Okay. So in that sense, there's a natural alignment with the, the, the English speaking West and the US. Hmm. But when it comes to geopolitics, uh, hmm. US takes certain decisions which are not in the interest of Pakistan. Sometimes they take decisions which uh, Dr. Malik earlier was talking about the evacuation from Afghanistan. Hmm. 20 years they were fighting a war and of we have course. been advising that this is a wrong policy unknown to the culture, unknown to the system, unknown to a lot of things, they were just investing trillions of dollars and that was also causing havoc for us and the region as well. Right. <coughs> Nonetheless, that's the past. Right. But so, Dr. Selma, how do you see uh, U.S. interest in the region? We talk about in the lens, from the lens of CPAC, uh, that we know that an east-west economic corridor linking India, Pakistan, Afghanistan and Central uh, Asian states, that could be detrimental, uh, that could be important and significant for United States. So <coughs> how do you see uh, that how, uh, uh, how United States is rethinking its uh, position towards CPAC and what would be its impacts on uh, its relations with Pakistan? Parim, you see, um, it is not only a time of transition for countries such as Pakistan, but it is also a major transitional time and a moment of reckoning for uh, powers such as the US. Mm. Because uh, if we look at the world uh, strategic map at that moment, we have both the Russians as well as the Chinese coming up in big time and big potential and an Asian, uh, that, that time for the Asian century has started to arrive. Mm. If it hasn't really arrived, for certain people they say it is already there, certain people are saying it is creeping in slowly mm. but uh, uh, there is a major potential mm. where uh, a totally different strategic thought is going to come up and a lot of that has to do with economics. So these uh, road li uh, ra rail linkages such as the CPEG, the BRI, etc. are part of that larger new normal that we are going to mm. see in the coming days. The oil politics, uh, who takes what, the Russian-Ukrainian mm. war. It's not for the love of the Ukrainian people that the Americans and the NATO and all are supporting. It is for several other things that, that uh, has unfolded. And uh, it, is, it is so normal for the global powers to find one scapegoat and destroy it to kingdom come and say that we were trying to save the people and that is precisely what is happening with the Ukrainians at the moment but the Chinese have their own way of running global politics which is very very unique from the rest of the world Americans mm. even the Russians the Russians have a different uh, and, and they feel it's their moment to come back stage a comeback even if they have to piggy bank on the Chinese for whatever situation so if if all of that is happening where is what is the United States thinking um, the Asia pivot point that uh, uh, Humayun Sahab pointed out towards, it's something that the U.S. had already started to work on, that this is going to happen and uh, they're, they're working, AUKUS, Quad, etc. They are part of that thing. India as a regional monitor is part of that thing. Uh, where does that leave Pakistan? Well, keep Pakistan in the pocket whenever it is required, then go back to it. But a very serious moment for them to sit back and reflect is, that suddenly China's diplomatic abilities as a broker, of course. Peace, peace broker between Iran and Saudi Arabia has come up, which is going to change the dynamics of the Middle East to a larger extent. Mm. Because both regional powers, China, uh, Afghanistan, sorry, Iran as well as Saudi Arabia had very divergent interest, independent of the US uh, shenanigans when it came to the entire of uh, the mm. Middle East or greater Persian Gulf. and. Uh, Given the fact that everyone notices that this is time for geoeconomics and economic engagement, just see how power dynamics are shifting. So A, Pakistan needs to be prudent about it and align itself accordingly. Don't discard the US altogether as some of our people are saying that we are out of slavery and so many hmm. other things. No, they are very important actors even if they do not remain the number one, they remain number 1.1 or whatever, they are still there. We have a lot of positivities to fall back on and to, uh, and to kind of uh, make them as the bridging blocks or the building blocks. But at the same time also see 
the point both our other speakers are talking about that uh, from from the Russians as well as from the Chinese uh, what best we can get out of it hmm. for our country of course so make ourselves the priority hmm. and figure we out we need how to diversify works. our options but the US hmm. shift is not going to be on Pakistan anytime sooner they have just moved out right they have just moved out and how to maximize uh, the interest and how to maximize on the ups we will be talking more about them but we have to take a short break here about Pakistan's relations with United States. Look, Rasan, when we talk about these relations, let's talk about economy. How do you see economic relations with, uh, between Pakistan and United States have evolved over time? And what are the major trade and investment opportunities for the United States in Pakistan? See, first of all, I would like to comment on that the, the economic pivot and the economic policy and economic base policy is the main agenda of Pakistan. We are not, uh, we are not into the block politics. We are not part of anything. We guess BRI is the one global part which is about the trade, trade and trade and ease of doing business. Now, so Pakistan goods and service trade with the US, if I talk uh, particularly about the US, had a uh, surplus of 23.21% uh, during the first month of the current fiscal year in 2022 and 23, compared to the same period in the last year. So export to the US uh, were recorded 49.686, uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, in a million dollar, down by the 0 0.68 from the same uh, year and down from 23.3 uh, from the June 22. So import from the U.S. were recorded as uh, uh, 1,64.59 million dollar, down by the 22.78 for the last year and down by the 70, uh, 51.29 uh, from the June 22. So, Pakistan overall export increased by 2.68 in the first month, while overall imports increased uh, by 0.26 percent. Year-on-year export by U U.S. during the March may increase by the 19.17 percent. So, in total, we are into the increasing percentage from the import side with uh, with about 34.46. Right, but, but Dr. Hussain, how are, how are the, the businesses and investors responding to the current economic climate in Pakistan? See, they are. They wanted to have the business because uh, uh, you, you you know that there is a trade. Uh, I mean, silence between a trade silence. I'm using the word trade silence between the China and America. But it is the reality that still all the products I, I recently came from uh, America. So I have seen all the products, Chinese products are e everywhere, and still the surplus of the product for the other five years is there for uh, in America. So America has no problem with any of the country uh, when, when it comes to trade. So Pakistan export is about the 21 percent where the textile, leather, agriculture products. And uh, uh, the, if I talk about the other data, which is about the Pakistan is the 56th lar uh, largest goods trading partner with the U.S. in 6.6 .6 billion in total trade good. So where about the deficit, trade deficit is 1.3 billion with the Pakistan in 2019 and U.S. exports of good Pakistan supported estimated about 10,000 jobs in uh, 2015, which has yet been going to, uh, I, I mean, it is on the, it's on the decreasing side, but we have to pick it up. But a very important point is in 2019 where the cotton, oil seed and uh, oleaginous uh, food, uh, soybean, iron, steam, um, uh, machinery, minerals and fuel, uh, which is going on upside. So U.S. total export of agriculture product to Pakistan were 1.2 per billion in uh, 2019 with cotton, soybean being the leading categories. So all the tra trajectory, if I see about the uh, textile uh, uh, articles, knitwear, uh, 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 woven ap uh, aprils, cotton and leather products, and uh, I have seen there in the market that 
if there is a big market from the uh, from the Sialkot where the surgical item is everywhere in the America. I have uh, visited uh, more than uh, five states over there, and I have seen the good of the trade, maximum trade by this. Uh, I mean, all are from this uh, Sialkot. Uh, the surgical products and the textile product so right. we need to give the maximum subsidy to the textile sector so that because we are into the demand they need our product they need our uh, the the textile uh, patterns they need our cottons they are they, they need our maximum trade so uh, if i talk about uh, maximum import of the article uh, pro uh, agriculture product from pakistan is one of uh, 125 million in 2021 and which is about the deficit increased by the 48.6 percent, and uh, which is near about 1.3 billion in 2019. So I am talking about FDI. If I talk about FDI, was uh, 154 million, uh, but it can okay. maximize up to maximum billion of dollar. We have to think on the two, three sector. One is surgical, second is uh, textile, and then is a leather. So US is very much into Pakistan. They want our product with, with the quality because maximum 100 plus uh, th thousand of the companies are working here which is exporting our product from uh, Faisalabad and other uh, cities right, right. Uh, there in uh, America. So America has a demand but we have to think about the board of investment and the role of board of investment must be very accurate because there is the import and export balance and there must be one window operation between the American side. So it is just not about the defense side. We are very much good in the uh, product side if we want to develop our export uh, uh, course, base to, develop our uh, to exports America as well. so we can maximize it. Of course, of course. Uh, Mr. Humayu, uh, these are the economic uh, ties and of course we need to expand those as well. But let's talk about uh, rethinking and revisiting Pakistan's relations with US. How do you see United States has, uh, you know, seen Pakistan in the past and how this perception of Pakistan uh, has evolved over time, specifically if we uh, talk about it in the backdrop of um, a U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan. Interesting uh, observation and a question at the same time. U.S. has not been thinking about Pakistan in the past, and I don't think U.S. is going to be thinking about Pakistan in the future. It's also uh, a superpower. It has its own interest, and as you were earlier mentioning about the changing geopolitics of the world, uh, they've already made their decision in terms of what and how they want to hmm. see South that Asia. That India is going to be a major it's, it's partner a pivot. in South Asian you region. You see their national hmm. security strategy, their coordinated defense review, their nuclear posture. Uh, this is also one of the reasons that we have been like <coughs> sanctioned, one of the most sanctioned ally of the U.S. <coughs> since 1947 up till now. There have been many a time sanctions on the uh, on Pakistani mm -hmm. side mm -hmm. from 1965, 1971, 1985, the famous Pressler uh, sanctions, 1997 mm. twice, uh, uh, 1998, 1990, up uh, in 2018, uh, President Trump basically stopped the uh, international military education and training uh, program between Pakistan military and the U.S. military at the same time, and then it has been revived uh, uh, of late. Uh, having said that. This is something which Pakistan need to do introspection and we need to develop our relationship uh, not necessarily at parity with the US but at least from a dignity point of view that this is something what we can do and this is something what we can't do. Uh, war and terror is a clear example. Pakistan outrightly became a partner with the US. We were the most uh, non-NATO major ally of the US and in that 20 years war against terror Pakistan suffered more than 100 thousand precious life civilian and military alike we suffered more than 150 to 200 billion dollars in our economic uh, damages then this is something which us also needs to realize because that 20 years there was a very funny uh, anecdotal uh, thing which happened when hillary clinton was visiting pakistan as a secretary of state and during a town hall meeting somebody asked her a question and she uh, really laughed about that and she said you know this relationship is like a mother-in-law and daughter-in-law uh, you do whatever to please your mother-in-law and sorry I'm not like saying it from that point of view but this has been a recorded event and she said yes uh, a mother-in-law is never happy so this relationship has its mostly ups and downs but the lows were really really bad because Pakistan has suffered a lot hmm. we've given too much to the US but in return we have never gotten enough yes there is too much trade Dr. Snan was mentioning about that we can expand that trade right. but right. Uh, okay. when it comes to we military to military relationship 
we have never gotten anything of significance except F-16, which we got like 20 years ago. We've been demanding spare parts. Mm. We want to do a lot of things, but right. we, there's sanctions after sanctions after we'll, sanctions. We'll, we'll. Dr. Salma, uh, what is the long-term outlook for U.S. interests in the South Asian region, and how should Pakistan align its uh, foreign policy? Um, number one, of course, prioritize one's own interest in the foreign policy and not uh, try to fend for others as we have always been very generous in uh, helping the friends at our own cost. So at such a situation uh, where Pakistan finds itself, uh, domestic governance and stability is the most priority item that we have to focus on because having irresponsible statements coming from um, different quarters of the world and then we uh, spend precious time trying to counter it is not exactly what is required. Um, and those statements would stop coming when we have internal security and strength. Um, I mean, Modi can get away with murder and uh, not an eyelash is batted. Uh, so we need to really be careful as to how we project ourselves in the world. Uh, one thing, the second thing, of course, is to have a better regional connectivity mm -hmm. for Pakistan when it comes to this. Pakistan is, is, is getting gradually isolated from the region and that is partly because of the Indian uh, agenda and also because of how Pakistan's foreign policy is unfolding. So we need to reconnect with the region and that is the region of South Asia and other regions as well because we mm -hmm. consider ourselves more as part of the Muslim world than as the South Asian region. So we need to do that. Then, of course, uh, spelling out in very clear and precise terms as to what our priorities are, which are geoeconomics. Um, our uh, national security policy had spelled it out. We have uh, the previous regime, this regime, both have been talking about geoeconomic priorities. Right, and, and talking need about geoeconomic priorities, uh, Dr. Hassan, <coughs> how do you see uh, that US, uh, what is US's position on Pakistan's efforts to diversify its options in terms of econ economy and uh, in terms of attracting foreign direct investments to Pakistan? See, it is just one mantra. You scratch my back and I scratch your back. We learn from America. So uh, they have to be very, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, they must have to focus this that they are aiding us in uh, economic growth. They are aiding in education and health but they must not intervene in our democracy and governance. Um, we are very much thankful to their aid about 1.113 uh, million in development and for the assistance, for the economic assistance, for the education assistance, for the health assistance. But let us uh, define ourselves that we are not dependent uh, on any of the geopolitical interests. We are, have our own interests. We are not the part of any of the, uh, we, we cannot give our land to any of the nation to use that uh, whatever their interest. So uh, we will have a good relation with China. We, are, we will have a good relation with Iran. We will get, uh, have a good relation with Saudi and we will have a good relation with the Southeast Asian, all the bloc. So uh, the democracy and Pakistan, they, this should not be the part of any of the government. So Mr. Humayun, what are the key opportunities for strengthening uh, bilateral relations be between Pakistan and United States? You know, the, there is a huge uh, uh, avenue which we can mm. explore, particularly Pakistan being mm. an uh, agrarian uh, country and mm. an economy. And now we're also trying to shift our focus towards industrialization as well. Uh, the second phase of China-Pakistan economic corridor uh, has just kicked in. We are, wanting, we are wanting other international companies to come here and invest. That's where we can also like lure in the American companies. We are already, mm. uh, as of now, the 80 plus companies, uh, American companies working in Pakistan in uh, financing sector, in banking sector, in servicing sector, consumer goods, uh, energy, clean energy, uh, and, and many other mm. uh, pharmaceutical as well. Mm. So I guess that's an area where we can attract more Chinese uh, American companies to come here and invest in the first uh, China-Pakistan economic corridor, uh, special economic zone, and then uh, sky's the limit. That's of course, the sky's first the thing. limit and people-to-people -people <coughs> contact is, uh, is another important uh, aspect of this relationship. So uh, Dr. Sadma, briefly uh, tell us that what are the areas of convergences between Pakistan and United States and what are the areas of divergences that needs to be addressed? Absolutely. We have talked about education. We have talked about uh, there's cultural uh, similarity as well. Mm. A similarity in the sense mm. that the young people, programs. exactly, professional exchange. So there's, there's this uh, bandwidth 
or the wavelength that mm. people enjoy with one another. Mm. Uh, we have a very uh, strong Pakistani American uh, Medical Association which is working there. So uh, we need to lobby a little more and understand the nuances of how to better the relationship and the convergence points. We need to capitalize them a little more than uh, keep on harping on the negative uh, sentiment. So that is very important. At the same time, we also need to understand Pakistan is going to remain a country which is, is, which is a pivotal state in which the US other countries will keep returning to because of their uh, larger uh, regional interests. Hmm. So how do we package ourselves? That is very important. So Pakistan needs to learn how to better market itself, how to better package itself. Of course. All the uh, negatives that at the moment we have, we can turn them into positivities and that will become a point of convergence. Uh, there are, as we started with, there are several highs and lows in every country's relations. Uh, the Indians never were, were allied course, to anyone. But we also need to understand one thing that Pakistan is not the only country in the region which is providing them with the type of services and goods. Uh, Bangladesh is doing the same as well as the fact that Pakistan has a lot of uh, cyber technology, uh, AI savviness and we need to capitalize on that. And uh, the virtual connectivity is also something very, very important. So look of at course. the new avenues and try to capitalize on them. Of course, try to capitalize on them. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Salma Malik, for joining in today's program. Thank you very much, Mr. Humayu Khan, for joining in today's program. Thank you very much, Dr. Hassan Jawed, for joining in today's program. In today's program, we talked about Pakistan's relationship with United States and how there is a need to rethink these relations uh, when we talk about uh, the region and regional connectivity and uh, the overall global climate that we keep on talking about. Uh, there uh, seems uh, that both sides are trying to avoid the lows and trying to maximize the highs of these relations. Uh, but uh, when we talk about any long-term relationship, uh, economic cooperation would be the key to these bilateral relations. That's all from Game Changer tonight. Take care. Allah.